1,000 people become homeless every month. But what do you do when you have nowhere to go and you're also a young mum? I just went online and I put in 18, 19, I'm pregnant and homeless. We want to tell our story of our lives here in our hostel. I think the word hostel is the one that gets people like, oh, that's disgusting. Some people get things handed to them. People like us, it doesn't happen. Because when you're young, homeless and have a baby, life can be very tough. I'm on my own. I don't have anybody. When I was pregnant, I used to love onions, like have onions on top of my kebab. At first, it was a shock. Obviously, sometimes contraception doesn't work. I mean, I never yeah. used contraception. No, I know quite a few people that's been pregnant, got pregnant on the pill. But I don't believe in abortions. I remember when that day came that I had to say I was pregnant. I was three months pregnant, gone. I'm Talamika, I'm 22, I've lived in this hostel for three years now, and I love fashion. These are some of the jeans that I've done, and then I've done the jacket this morning. You might be wondering how I ended up in this hostel. Well, I'm going to tell you how. I moved out at a young age. I was a little terror. I will not deny that I was a big terror, should I say. Just my whole life within that time was a mess. I just wasn't stable and I wasn't actually looking for stability. The things that I was doing, it just hurt my family a lot. And that, that was that. Carnival had literally just gone, so I was like drinking and living my best life. He was like my first serious boyfriend. I just instantly became attached, like instantly. He took me into his family home. We supported each other, we was there for one another. I kept saying, I haven't covered my period. And then I'm like, gone to the clinic now. Oh, let's just go and get a checkup. Let's just see. When I took the pregnancy test, it came back positive. So at that point, it was like, what the hell am I going to do? As soon as I got the news that I was pregnant, I told my boyfriend, Terry. Being at such a young age, he wasn't ready for commitment, whereas I was. It was very hurtful, like, very hurtful to know that I've known and loved this person for so long and they just kind of dropped me in the midst of when I needed them the most. It's like I don't want to blame him but at the same time you should have been there. Our relationship is quite complicated but I'll speak more on that later. I just went online and I put in um, 18, 19, I'm pregnant and homeless. And that's all I kept typing in. There are some very vulnerable people living in our hostel, so we can't show you exactly where it is. But I can say that we are in Luton on a normal residential street. I was not expecting that, you know. <laughs> I don't need this much, so I'm going to put these back. So the criteria to live here is you need to be pregnant or have a child and you have to be homeless. All in all, I think there's about 10 flats in this building. I think all of us are making something, innit, guys? <laughs> when you move into somewhere like this, it's a scary place. Being with people that you don't know, you're by yourself, and you can be here for a very long time. As soon as you hear someone say, oh, I live in a hostel, you probably think, oh, you're a tramp. Trust me. I used to have that perception of hostels, like, oh, yeah. Hostels are disgusting. And then it's like, oh yeah, karma's a B-I-T-C-H because <laughs> am I not in one? Yeah, you get on with it. Yeah. Let me introduce you to some of the girls. Meet Shanice. She's lived here for eight months and will soon be moving out into her own council flat. My name's Shanice, I'm 17 years old. I have a one and a half year old daughter. <laughs> this is the office. This is the kitchen. Oh, vegetables. <laughs> I'm 17. My birthday's on Wednesday, and then I'll be 18. So I am the youngest in here. This is the laundry room. We all have times to wash. So I'm on Fridays and Sundays, but I do my washing whenever I want. It's good on the side of you make new friends, and like if you get lonely, 
Like, you can come down and talk to people. And if you get close to staff, you can go in the office and speak to them. There's downfalls. Get mice. <laughs> this is the living room. I was living with my auntie and uncle, and then it just didn't end up very well. We kept arguing all the time. I've always just had that kind of attitude. I can do what I want when I want. And I think it was because I never had a mum or a dad. My dad was in jail, um, and my mum is a druggie, basically. <laughs> I see her in the street all the time. She walks fast like she don't know who I am. It makes me feel sick. <laughs> never want to be nothing like her. I do not understand how you can pick drugs over your own children. <laughs> what are you doing? Now you all just The rice, the rice, the rice. My friend Alana, she lives here. Me and her are really close. I see her like my sister. So, Alana, are you the person who Mommy, chats to everyone? Mommy, up! Mommy, up! Yeah. 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 yeah, I basically Mommy speak to everybody. Up. Mommy, up! I don't really have no problems Mommy with up. nobody. Mommy. Only if they make a problem with me. Being a single parent is hard. Like, you do need that support emotionally, financially. It, like, it can be very hard. You chose to ejaculate inside a woman, so you now have to, you know, suffer the consequences of what's to come of it. That's just how I feel it goes sometimes. You just have to take responsibility. I got pregnant really quickly, but he said no matter what, he would support me, so... In a way, I'm happy my baby dad is the way he is because I get her to myself most of the time and I don't have to share her. <laughs> it's like he's there he's when he's there, but when he's not, he's not there. There's not an in-between. Is he young? Yeah. Yeah, 18. Oh, OK. So a high school love her, love her. And if we think raising one child on our own is hard, one of us here is looking after two. I'm Katie. I am, well, a couple of weeks away from turning 20, which is great. It's good to feel old. <laughs> Up. Having twins is very hard. Every day is always different. I'm on my own. I don't have anybody. I don't talk to my mum anymore. <laughs> I don't really talk to my dad. He lives in Brighton, so I feel alone. <coughs> I know, it's OK. He was my first ever first boyfriend. Like, I was so in love with him. He wasn't really romantic. He just liked a lot of sex, and he liked to have it whenever he wanted to have it. It was really, it was really toxic. He definitely destroyed my confidence and my self-esteem. He was for me having an abortion because I was very uncertain because obviously I was 16 at the time. When I found out I was having twins is what made it harder for me to have an abortion because obviously there was two. I can never find anything anywhere. Oh, what is my life? No, no more now because we need to go. We think Katie's amazing. Not only is she raising her twins and trying to find them a permanent home, but she's got into college and is studying childcare. It's like the race against time, pretty much, to get out the door. Alice, come on. Alice! Go, 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 go. They, attend, they tend to take their time sometimes, and sometimes they refuse to walk, sometimes they refuse to let me hold the hand whilst we're the road. Alice, come here. See? Every day is tiring, but you know. Fina, come on. I'm trying to build a life for them. I'll do absolutely anything for them, because they are the most amazing thing that's ever happened to me, even though they weren't planned. Wait, wait, wait. In the end, it's all worth it. Bye, girlies. Bye, Fina. Alice. Bye. For all of
of us, getting pregnant wasn't exactly part of the plan. I can't wait to give it to my mummy. And this is the special one for Mummy's Day. Mummy, me. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but I really want to eat that. You're a good baby, darling. What annoys me is that a lot of people are like, oh my goodness, you've had a child young, you, you must be like really promiscuous and stuff. But there's a lot of girls, they've had so many abortions that it, it doesn't look bad. Do you understand what I'm saying? But then now that we've actually had our child, it's like, oh, it looks bad. And it's just like, well, no, we're, I just took responsibility of my actions. Do you know what I mean? They do drive insane, though, so um, I wouldn't advise having them <laughs> when you're young, anyway. Did it ever cross your mind, like, adoption? No. Giving it away your children? Mm -mm. No, yeah. I'd never do that. No. I would, I, I, nah, it just wouldn't. It didn't, it wouldn't have even mattered what situation I was in. I'm sorting myself, I'm having my baby. I see, I see where you're coming from, but I'm adopted, and I, I'm glad I wasn't aborted, do you know what I mean? I'd rather, <laughs> I know this, <laughs> so crazy, but I, I'm glad yeah, that my yeah, mum didn't abort me because then I wouldn't know what mangoes taste like. But you know what I mean? Like, I enjoy life. So I was in care for a little bit. Then I was adopted, but I was naughty. So yeah, I got chucked out. Then after I got chucked out, I was like sofa surfing for a bit. <laughs> When I found out I was pregnant, I've been living in hostels for a while. <laughs> My monthlies were really irregular. Then I thought, no, let me check, because I'm starting to go off certain foods and stuff. And like this certain chicken shop, I used to eat, I could eat them every day. But then I would have walked past the chicken shop, it's making me feel sick. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what is going on? Hi. Can I do your hair now, please? <laughs> no, I got your hair done. <laughs> <laughs> she, Alyssa, you, I, you are something else. She wanted to do her birthday. I was thinking to do a little party for her here, but then again, I always think like the parents of those kids probably wouldn't want them to come around anyway because it's a hostel and there's a stigma attached to people who live in hostels. Do you understand what it means to, um, to live in a hostel, Alyssa? Go on, what do you think? It's a building that where lots of people live. If you can't, if you don't, if you can't live anywhere and, the, and you only have a little bit of money. Okay, you little smart cookie. It's not nice. It's not nice having to be in the system. It's not nice calling up the housing and the housing are talking to you like you're nobody because you're on benefits. It's crazy. <coughs> What'd you say? Pardon, pardon, pardon me. Not hungry. Mummy. Eat. At the moment, I'm unable to get my own place because I got myself into debt. So thank God for visitors. Tomorrow, we have someone special come in to see us. Amari's dad. On the day I gave birth, maybe the day after, I reached out and said, you know, I've had Amari. It was a shock to him because we hadn't spoken, so he didn't know what I had done. He didn't know whether I had terminated. I just think it was something that he didn't want to believe because he was so young. But I just don't see how two people who have been through so much together just can't come as one. You know, it just doesn't make any sense. <sighs> Amari's dad works as a stylist in the music industry and lives in London. Pick up your dinosaur. Can we get a um, child, an adult, and an extra adult, please? Yeah. Yeah. Jump! <laughs> Woo. It's always good to, you know, spend time with my kids. I wish that I could see him when I, I want to see him. But I think that you have to, you know, prioritize your lifestyle and your job sometimes so you can give him a better future. What do you mean? <laughs> you want me to fight you, huh? Nah, I'm a cool dad, so he's a cool kid. That's how it is. What did he say? I'm a cool dad. <laughs> wow, it's true though. One, two, three. Oh, that's jump. <laughs> It 
Tea? Yeah. Do you want waffles? Yeah, I'm coming. Do you think you'll get, get back together? I don't really see why not. I just need to do what I have to do. I'm not really God, and only He knows if we'll get back together. And I personally know that we'll get back together, but it happen when it decides to happen. So that's how I see it. Yeah. Terry's heading back to London. It will be a little while until we can see him again. If, if he says we'll be together, then I'm going to believe that we'll be together. We just have to wait for that time to come. This year, hopefully. Not one to party, am I, Kai? Hey, um, Move, I saw you at Ruby's the other night, mate. What are you talking about? You was wearing a little black dress and shit, and you were just like... Okay. Hey, guys. She's talking about, you know how in the world they say that you, you see two people and they look the same? Here's the lights and some frames and doors. You can even do that. Ah, lovely. And here's the office and secret code, like a spy. And you can dum -dum. And there's some more pictures and frames. Georgina used to live in there. Tommy still lives in there. I live in there. And Moscow used to live in there. Sometimes you meet there and new people go in your flats. And I'm so excited to move away. You can't stay in here forever and ever. It's 4.30pm and Katie's had a bad day at college. Thankfully, there is support at the hostel and staff who can lend her an ear. So what's, what's been happening today? I fell asleep today oh, no. for like a couple minutes and, there was, and they sat me down because I started crying. She was like, you, can, you have days where you do really amazing and then you have days where, where, you're, where you're not that good and maybe you should consider placement at this time isn't yeah. right and then consider doing it later in the future. But if I stop doing it now, that means I've failed my whole course. I've worked yeah. really, really hard to get to where I am. So you're determined, everything. you're yeah. going to do it, it which made is me, great. It made me feel more determined. I don't want to drop everything, because then if I drop everything, I'm going to feel more of a failure. I do worry about Katie and how she's going to cope if she gets a place of her own. It's like having two Amaris. <laughs> I don't know how I cope. There's actually never a day where I'm not tired, but you're just doing everything for them. Some people get things handed to them. People like us, it, it doesn't happen. We have yeah. to work for it, we have to do things for it. I want to see them happy, I want them to grow up happy, even though I feel like I'm terrible every single day. <laughs> Like, honestly, don't ever feel like you're not doing enough because, mate, you're a mother, you're only 20. You know, just putting a roof over their head and, you know, buying them little toys yeah. and stuff. It's good enough. Honestly, it is, Katie. It's good enough. Yeah. Two, three, four. Today is Shanice's 18th birthday. I got her into chocolate. She never used to eat chocolate before. That's weird, isn't it? <laughs> Let's do this. Hey, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday. I'm sorry, she hasn't singing. To, to me. Blow out the candles and hurry up. <laughs> let, me, let, let, me, let me think of a wish. We all have the same wish, to get out of this place and have our own homes. <laughs> Look at all the cake wax in there. I know, it's because I never put them little holder things on it. And now Shanice has had some good news. She's finally got a council flat of her own. So, you'll be moved out by a week Monday. What have you got left to do at your flat then? Gas? Yeah, my electric's done. When I move out, I'm, I feel like I'm going to be excited and scared at the same time. You're excited because you have your own place, you can decorate, but scared because 
It's a big step from being surrounded by people to suddenly you're on your own. You've got bills to pay. <laughs> How does it feel to be grown up, like get carpets for your birthday? No, but I love it though. That's actually me. <laughs> I'd rather have stuff yeah, from exactly. my house than a car. Like, I can get that myself. Amari, are you happy now? Juggling a child with limited income means our options for getting a roof over our head are very limited. I've been here for coming on three years now. I just feel like I need to move. It's just stressful, to be honest. I've been here longer than any of the girls because I got myself into debt. When I was living here in supported housing, I took it upon myself to start working, to get money and I was a revenue control officer for Thameslink. It was, it was a beautiful job, like, it, I loved it. And like 26 and a half K at that age, beautiful pay. I was like living life, trainers, clothes, I got Sky. I think Amari broke the TV, I went and got a new one the next day because I was like, yeah! But what I didn't realise was I shouldn't have been claiming benefits while working full time. I was loaded with a debt of just over £3,000. Because I owe the hostel money, I can't leave until I've paid it all off. It is the worst See? feeling in the world when you can't get a house <laughs> or a flat. <laughs> like, just keep trying, literally. I, I, I already told her she's a good mum, but I can't do twins. Two co twins? Two twins is a lot. Should we go and see mummy? Knock, knock. Can I come in? Yeah. Is that all right? No. <laughs> After over a year in the hostel, Katie has been offered the chance to choose a council flat. I'm not very good at making my own decisions, which is my problem. When you're, when you're a parent, you have to kind of think of, Move it's best for them, move it's safe for them, if it's in like a good area and stuff like that. Because people without kids, they don't really, it doesn't really phase them, they just want to move out and, you know. I think sometimes you find the unknown really scary, don't you? Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't want to make like the wrong decision that's I'm scared of. I know it's just me being picky, but I guess I kind of have to because I'm going to be living there for the rest of my life. Are you still considering going and having a look at the area? Yeah, we're planning on going today. I feel really weird, because I don't actually live okay. here. Um, seems nice and quiet. I quite like... I don't know what the feeling is when you see a house and you're like, that is my house, you know, or whatever it is. Do you want to live here? Huh? Do you want to live here? Yeah. Yeah? What is that? Oh, there's a phone outside. There's a phone there. Well, it could have fallen out of someone's bin, maybe. Like Louise suggested, there's been a few working girls around here, which puts me off a little bit, because I don't want to be caught up in some kind of, like, prostitute ring or something like that. I mean, no one can make this choice but me, and it's, like, I honestly didn't think I'd be making decisions at this age. Um, so I didn't think I was going to have kids young. I didn't think I was going to be living in a hostel, really. Katie decides that this council flat isn't for her and will have to keep waiting. Shanice is definitely the lucky one, though. She's left us girls and moved into her brand new council flat. My lovely carpet. £500. Would never have thought I would have had my own place at 18. I feel like I skipped the teenage years and went straight to an adult, but that's the decision I made. And I wouldn't change it. So I'm happy. Get on with my life. <laughs> Give me a kiss. I spent the last year trying to pay off as much of my debt as possible. Mm -hmm. I'm now down to the last £600 and have applied for special council funding. 
to pay the rest of it off. Today we're calling the council and I'm hoping there might be better news about my debt. I've got one of our young people with us um, putting a discretionary housing payment application several months ago and we're just wanting um, an update if possible. So the arrears actually were very, very significant but she's been paying as much off as she possibly can and she's paid quite a huge chunk off herself. There's just this remaining last bit now and I'm really keen to get this resolved. So the actual shortfalls, because the DHP pays, um, can consider helping where there's the shortfalls in the rent. I'll, um, I'll do that when I've finished talking to you and um, it'll go through on the payment run tonight. Yeah. How much? 677.96. So that's definitely going to be paid, is it? Yeah. All right, thanks a million. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine like we didn't make this call? Oh my god, I'm gonna be gone. <laughs> I'm gonna be I'm gonna be out of here. You just don't need us anymore. Yeah, I don't. So you know. <laughs> words can't describe how I'm feeling right now. Yeah. Thank you. Finally, I too will be able to leave the hostel, have my very own house and get on with my life. I just hope the girls I'm leaving behind will also be able to get back on their feet and start truly living their lives. Yeah.